Hello, I'm Gregor Waters Hettel and today I'll be talking to you about superconductivity. Superconductivity is basically when a material loses all of its electrical resistance and exhibits something called the Meissner effect. Today I'll be showing you um, in depth the Meissner effect and how it works using two different superconductors this one here and this one here which exhibits something called magnetic flux pinning. I'll show you a bit more later. Both of these superconductors need to be cooled with liquid nitrogen to become superconductive. They need a cold temperature to change state. First I will cool down this superconductor. Remember this one does not exhibit magnetic flux pinning which again I will show you later. I will cool it down and then place a magnet over it. These are neodymium iron boron magnets and they are quite powerful. Just give it a moment for the superconductor to cool down. Okay, so now that this superconductor has become superconductive, when one places a magnet over it, the superconductor completely expels the magnetic field. Imagine this magnet, imagine the magnetic field of this magnet as little lines that come out from the top and go down and back into the bottom. When you place it over the, mag over the superconductor, the magnetic field lines go out, go around the superconductor, and then go back in. They do not go into the superconductor. So when we place it on, it levitates. There. And this levitation, as you can see, is not very impressive and I had to correct it a few times. This is because this superconductor does not exhibit magnetic flux pinning. I'll show you next what magnetic flux pinning is. As I was saying before, this superconductor exhibits magnetic flux pinning. Magnetic flux pinning is basically when a magnet stays pinned in one area above the superconductor and cannot move from there. This is because impurities have intentionally been put into the superconductor so that it stays pinned in space. It basically traps the magnetic field. I'll cool it down and show you how it works. I've put a spacer over the superconductor so that the magnet stays pinned at this distance over the superconductor because as I said before the magnet gets locked into a fixed position over the superconductor because its magnetic field is trapped inside the superconductor. Now I will Put the magnet over and cool the superconductor down with liquid nitrogen. Now, because the boiling has subsided, you can now see that the magnet has become pinned above the superconductor. I will remove the spacer so that you can see this more clearly. There we go. Now you can clearly see that the magnet is levitating over the superconductor at a fixed distance and if I try to actually push on the magnet I can feel a strong force that opposes me and that will not allow, allow the magnet to get closer to the superconductor. I will, soon show you, I will soon show you a few more clips with different magnets. Here I'll show you levitation with a slightly smaller disc magnet. Now 
The interesting thing about magnetic flux pinning is that the superconductor remembers its previous position the previous position of the magnet. So I can basically just put another magnet on top of it and it'll revert to the same position that the old magnet was in. There we go. It is actually attracted to its old position and as you can see it is levitating over it. Here is the same thing but with a rectangular magnet. I have pinned it in a higher position so that you can see the effect better. Here you go. Here you can clearly see the levitation over the superconductor. And we can put it back and then you can see that it still levitates. Here I have pinned this bar magnet on top of the superconductor and as you can see the orientation of which is it in which it is levitating in doesn't matter. It can levitate under and it can levitate over. It really doesn't matter. The reason I'm dipping it into the liquid nitrogen at regular intervals is to keep it cool. If it heats up again, then, um, then it'll lose its superconductivity. This is also why I've wrapped it in cellophane, to keep it cool. Here I have pinned a ring magnet over the superconductor. As you can see, it keeps on spinning around since the only thing stopping it from spinning without stopping is the friction of the air around it. Here you can see, and as I said before, there is a strong force that opposes me if I try and push the magnet down against the superconductor. I would actually break the plastic fork that I'm holding it up with. And now for the end of this video, I will take two huge magnets put together and pin the superconductor under it. First I'll add the liquid nitrogen. Next, I will put the magnet over the plastic container with the superconductor. Here, now you can see that the magnet has been pinned under. The, um, the superconductor has been pinned under the magnet. Of course I have to put it into the liquid nitrogen to keep it cool and then I can take it back out again. Frankly I find this extremely impressive. And then as the superconductor heats up again, it'll simply fall down into my hand. Once it changes state back to normal. There we go. Thank you very much for watching my video. I hope I entertained you, and I hope I taught you something. Goodbye.